G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. Today we're going to be doing some paper cutting. I'm returning to uh, one of my passions, paper cutting. I'm not going to cut anything out of the journal today, I'm actually just slicing into the page and making a bit of a uh, 3D pop-up and pop-out kind of an element. I wouldn't say pop-up because it doesn't doesn't pop open when you open the page. You do have, there's a bit of setup, there's a bit of engineering that goes into it to get the look. But I am um, really happy about it and I just, I'm going to give this to you in real time but I've cut out a chunk of the stuff that gets really monotonous. So um, trying that format today as well, love to hear your opinions as always. Um, thank you for your feedback on last week's video to my uh, 55 minute gang that really enjoyed last week's video. Sorry about this week. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sorry. Honestly, I'm truly not. But um, I just wanted to say thank you for your feedback. I really do enjoy that kind of a video myself to watch. And I totally understood uh, why a lot of people gravitate towards that when they're doing lots of work. I know it's not for everybody, but to be honest, it seemed like it fit really well with the analytics of all the other videos. So I think I will definitely put that into rotation. I can't say how often. Obviously, I've, I've taken my YouTube videos back to one video a week this year. But uh, some days, sometimes like some weeks, there are extra videos and I'm also going into playtest to my Patreon uh, summer experience in August. So they might pop up in there, they might pop up back on YouTube, who knows. But uh, thank you nonetheless for your feedback. Anyway, today I'm going to give you a bit of a play-by-play -play on what's going on, give you a bit of tips, give you a bit of tips, give you some tips, a few tips, tricks and techniques if they uh, pop into my head. I think this is the first time I've kind of ever sketched something out. Uh, like a proper sketch where I actually erase the working lines on this channel. I don't know if I've done that or maybe I did it at the start. I feel like I haven't done this in years. Um, I do this all the time. Well, not even really. I never really erase all the working lines. But today I just wanted to clean it up. I wanted to give it a more of an illustrated uh, look and something a bit more finished and polished than what I typically do. When I'm going really intuitive, I don't care to like clean everything up and polish it all. I just want it to be fun. And uh, that usually doesn't involve laboring over the cleanup process, <laughs> but today I felt like it. So I'm um, going in with this mechanical pencil, first of all, I've, for the longest time I hated mechanical pencils. I just, I'm just very heavy handed. I think I would always snap the leads and just found them a waste of time for me. Um, that's until I, you know, decided to use them properly. I didn't overextend the lead and now I really, really love them. I love them because you can get such a variety of uh, depth and boldness with your lines. You can go super feather light and get such a really light impression. And then if you really commit to a line, you can get a really bold one. And, um, have you ever seen, I don't know if people have seen this, but sometimes when I'm really deep in the Instagram vortex, there, there's a uh, brush lettering videos where people use a pencil. Ever since I saw that, I realized that a lot of what I love about pencils now is really focusing on the pressure that I use when I'm using them and even the angle that I'm using them at because the, the graphite, you know, the lead wears down at different angles and you can get different effects depending on how you tilt the pencil. It's, uh, there's, there's actually a lot to play with in the standard pencil. That's why I've, I think I've kind of been having a bit of a love affair with that in the past few months. Uh, so I'm really into that. Ballpoint pens as well, I've been really into that. Anyway, this video kind of came about because I was on YouTube and I was watching another artist, Casey Golden. She's more like an art YouTuber. Uh, you know, there's like niches of YouTube where there's art art YouTubers, there's mixed media YouTubers, there's bullet journal YouTubers. <laughs> you know, people like have their focuses, have their like super niche. I guess art isn't a super niche, but the, you know, there's those styles of YouTube channels, but um, she's got one of those art YouTube channels and uh, very, very popular. And she does some really interesting illustrations. And I always find it fascinating to see how her brain works. And she was doing some paper cutting and I was looking and I was preempting where I thought she was going to go with her project and uh, it didn't end up happening. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I should try that because it was just a thought that popped into my mind. I thought, oh yeah, she's going to do this next and she did something different. So I grabbed a piece of paper and tried what I ended up making in this video, this little it's like a pop up and a pop down at the same time. It's it's just, you know, I essentially created two tabs inside a page. And uh, one's going to pop up towards us and one's going to pop down below. And there's just a little bar in between the illustration, dividing the torso and the legs. And that what that's what's going to stay attached to the page. So that when I tip it up uh, and you kind of tip the book on the side, you'll see that the fairy kind of looks like she's standing up in the middle of the book. And yeah, I'm going to slice it out. So... It's not really that difficult. All you really need to do is leave a bar in the middle, like leave a line that's still attached. Um, you know, the top half still needs to be attached to the page and the bottom half needs to be attached to the page. Uh, but you 
yeah, all you have to do is fold the one flap up and the one flap below and you're kind of set to go with this kind of a technique. So I was really enjoying it. I think fairies were really appropriate. I've been taken with fairies this month because it's my birthday month and I'm having a bit of a journey back to me. So I'm doing fairies, mermaids, fashionistas. Oh, are you still watching Netflix? <laughs> Steve's here. I don't know. Sometimes I equalize the volume or like it reduce the background noise. So sometimes things I think you can hear, you don't hear. And then I start talking about it. So I'll just leave it. Uh, but Steve is here. He's working from home today. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so anyway, that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of using this mechanical pencil just to sketch out my fairy. Um, this is very much in the uh, kind of style we kind of look at in Whimsical Illustration, the online workshop. Uh, but I have been venturing into a bit of a more uh, 50s, kind of mid-century uh, children's book illustration style as well with the faces and uh, you know all of that I kind of let myself run with it if I'm feeling particularly inspired by something I usually exhaust it and in that process I'll be led on to the next thing that I enjoy so you know it I don't feel bad about not having any one thing that I focus on all the time honestly for me it's just about the creativity it's just about having ideas and playing with ideas and since I was watching uh, Casey's YouTube video and then you know I, I was preempting what she was doing I realized she wasn't doing it and I thought oh I'll give it a go I was kind of doing that thing that Elizabeth Gilbert thing where if, if an idea comes to you you need to like grab it and go for it immediately <laughs> I think that's what she said I don't know I'm paraphrasing um, but just kind of going with it as soon as I, I could. I was really, really taken with it. I didn't want to lose interest in it because I thought, you know, there's always time to procrastinate for me. I could always talk myself out of doing it today. <laughs> so I ended up doing it straight away and I just kind of loved how it turned out, especially this point when I've sliced around the edge with the X-Acto knife. I think the silhouette, the silhouette looks really pretty, uh, but also the sunlight was streaming through into the studio and you can see that the, um, they cast really, really beautiful shadows on the actual paper themselves. I considered almost tracing around the shadows and, you know, just putting those in like a, a light gray watercolor and just leaving the page like that. Cause I thought that would just be, I don't know. I thought it'd be super effective, but I didn't end up doing that. Cause I did want to finish the whole piece. But at this point I did turn the camera off, take a photo for Instagram and put it on Instagram. <laughs> Cause I was just very, very excited. And those I love those kind of projects. I mean, do you have those often? I feel like it's like hit and miss. I don't think you could ever sit down and, you know, expect to have those moments where you just feel really proud and, you know, really happy with something. See those shadows? I just love that. Um, but I, I do have a lot of the time, like I'm really happy with a lot of the stuff that I do. Um, but then sometimes I just, you know, it just turns out better than I could have expected. And I love that it was a fairy. And then when you kind of tip the page, it looks like she's flying into the next page. It just, it sent my mind off into a million different directions. And um, at this point, I, you know, after I'd taken my Instagram photo, I thought I should do like 16 more of these and they should all be different. <laughs> and, you know, that excitement then leads to, you know, planning out 50,000 things you'll never actually do. But um, I just wanted to finish at least this one before I, I put it to bed. And, you know, I, I might pick up this idea again. Maybe this will be the only time I do this for another couple of years. But I think you really should chase down those those kind of ideas that you have in your head. They might not always work. Uh, I just don't think you should limit it because, you know, you've found an excuse to limit it. Like, some people don't want to cut into their journals. And, and I can understand that. It's a little, it's a little sensitive, <laughs> cutting into books. Um, but th there's so much paper in there. And, you know, oftentimes I see a lot of people with unfinished journals or half started journals and to me it's like well that paper is going to sit there and do nothing anyway you might as well start cutting into it slicing into it playing with it ripping it up and you know experimenting with all of those different things that you haven't tried before because uh at the end of the day even if you did cut out most of the pages in your book i'm assuming that most people watching this have a spare six journals just laying around <laughs> um but you know if it really if it really does bother you you could do it on a just a piece of printer paper that's where i did my test and it still works you just fold it in half pretend it's just one journal spread so um do that if you wish i would just encourage you to go with it i know i there's a lot of people that i've talked to before that flick through my journals and, and talk about the interactivity of some of those pages which i personally love it makes me feel like a kid kind of flipping them open and seeing you know a hidden message in there or there's something hiding behind there or this kind of pops out at you there's people that comment on it and, and really want to give it a go but also let me know that it's just something they don't want to they don't want to risk screwing up uh, because then it's going to be in your journal forever, which, you know, it's not true. You could take it out or um, or they don't want to do it because it's going to, you know, the journal's full of expensive paper. And I understand that as well. I'm not telling you to like go and light your journal on fire just to make a treasure map. But 
I, I think you should try it. I, I don't know. To me, I just feel like there's not much you could lose. It's just a book. <laughs> but I guess, you know, if you've got your good reasons, you've got your good reasons. I would just encourage you, if there is a little part of you that's kind of feel, that's feeling a little nagged at right now, it's probably that part of you that's making excuses not to try some of that stuff. And there's no reason you shouldn't. Just go for it. Uh, if it doesn't work out, get rid of it, pretend you never did it, move on. <laughs> That's how I approach it anyway. I, I seem to have fun doing it that way. Anyway, so moving on, we uh, I'm still kind of shading at this point. I, I decided to color the whole thing in. Well, not color, essentially, but shade everything and kind of finish it all with graphite. And I used a Palomino Blackwing pencil as well as the mechanical pencil to add you know, some depth and boldness, to add some more shading. Uh, I, I like to use a regular pencil and a mechanical pencil together. It's kind of like when I use a brush pen and a fine liner. I just feel like, you know, the effects are like a little different, um, the boldness of, of some of your shading, it's a lot easier to shade a larger area with a, a regular pencil, not a mechanical pencil. Um, so I would just encourage, you know, having both of those tools at your disposal, if you want to do a fully illustrated graphite piece, maybe that'll help. You could even go really hardcore and get the graphite sticks, or like the pastel looking sticks. Um, I'm not so much into that because it's very, very messy. <laughs> but um, using both of them together hand in hand, I think it, it goes really, really well. And uh, I've just been, I've been really into graphite lately. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. There is a little bit of a story that went along with this as well. It kind of just came to me as I was doing it. I didn't set out with any kind of narrative in mind, but I think I just got really carried away with, uh, with what I was seeing and it just kind of uh, popped out at me. And uh, I do end up writing it on that little space there where I put the little lines. Um, but the story is how do the petals get their pigment and to me it was just every night the flowers go to sleep they lose all their color and before they wake up in the morning the fairies come and uh, sprinkle all their color back on them really not that deep <laughs> i don't think i'm winning any kind of uh literary awards anytime soon but you know even that to me i will be honest when it first came to my head i thought i'm not going to put that in there people are going to think i'm crazy if i put that in there this is one of those pages people are going to see and they're going to think is that really what goes through his head he's so simple like and i thought you know what I'm, I'm i'm trying to be more candid i'm trying to just uh free myself up a little bit more I'm, I'm very free as it is but believe it or not there's still a bunch that i'll second guess myself for and uh, specifically kind of um some of the stories behind what i do i just Sometimes I feel like if I share them, people are going to think they're dumb. So I just don't share them and I just say it is what it is. Um, but this one did have a little story and I'm going to share it today. And I think I'm only kind of sharing it because I really enjoyed how the um, <laughs> the effect of the little color came in at the end. <laughs> if I'd screwed it up, I wouldn't have said anything, I'm sure. But uh, right at the end, I do take out my watercolors and I kind of just flick all of this uh, you know, really saturated watercolor onto the page. You'll probably freak out and think I'm making a huge mistake, uh, but you'll see at the end how I kind of um, pull it together. And I was really happy with it. It was a total experiment. I didn't know if it was going to work. I was actually kind of nervous by the point that I did it because I was I did it before thinking like I wouldn't be able to fix that if it went wrong. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I was just kind of thought, oh yeah, I've got this idea. Let's just go for it. And I'd put so much work into the page already. I thought, oh no, maybe I should have tried this on a different page or at least tested it before I did it. So it was a complete miracle that it did work out. There you go. Just throwing it onto the page. <laughs> this is when I kind of thought, oh no, I hope this works because I, I didn't test this. And uh, I, I threw it onto the page. I grabbed some paper towel and then I blotted it up. I do let it sink into the, into the substrate a little bit before I blot it up. And I just wanted a staining. I didn't want that, those puddles of pigment just to sit on the page and dry at full strength, but I knew if I just left them there for a bit, it would stain the paper underneath and I could just lift off that liquid on top and it would just be left with just the most beautiful like confetti kind of um, bokeh. Is that what it's called, Steve? You know, like the bokeh and the lens, like, yeah, it's like blurry. Yeah, bokeh, <laughs> bokeh raton. It's, uh, it's left with just, just like a beautiful, it, to me it looks like fairy sprinkles. Anyone have fairy bread? I've got fairies on the brain. Um, it just looks like confetti and I really, really love it. So I hope you enjoyed watching that. I hope you enjoyed the little play-by-play -play and some of the tips and the tricks and the techniques. I'm going to set it up for you, uh, make it real 3D, make it present really nice, give you some close-ups, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye. You show me that what comes up must go down to the bottom of the sea. I know now you show me with you I'll never ever I'm never ever free. I know.